fast on. Welcome, ECI. Wait, Welcome. Wait, not yet. We're just recording that white lady talk. You didn't. We're not live yet, Larry. <laughs> so he is ready to go. This man said, "I'm ready." I heard the white lady. No, I wasn't even ready to go. I was just. It was awkward silence. So I was like, "Okay." Oh, me... you're so silly. Economic crisis. Get you. God, who's calling? Um, I can't take it right now. Dan, give me a minute. Initiative, initiative. Um, tonight, we will hear from, we'll hear from, I'm live. I'll do it. Dr. Exuma. And Mr. L.A. Robinson. All right, AKA Larry. All right, we're about to go live here on Facebook as well. Um, got it. Perfect. All right. We are live. Welcome, everybody. We are live with the Economic Crisis Initiative. It's your girl, Anaya A. I believe we are on Facebook already. Um, at this time, we are going to let you all know that we have two presenters on Mr. L.A. himself, Mr. Larry and Dr. Etuma. They are back on top of their game with your girl Anaya A. And tonight I'm excited because we get to share more great information with you all that are watching. Tell a friend we're live um, on ECI tonight. Larry, are you available to unmute yourself? I'm available. I'm here, live and live in color. All right, Larry. Well, go ahead. You already know what time it is here on ECI. I have to answer a call real quick, but I know you know what to do, Larry. So go ahead. And then, of course, don't forget, I have a very interesting question for both you and Dr. E in just a little bit. So talk to us, Larry. What's on your mind for tonight? I appreciate it. But before I get started, I want to say welcome again, Dr. Eczema and Dan. It's good seeing y'all good brothers again. So welcome back. But um, what I will start off by saying is, you know, I know for the past couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, um, we've been discussing highly about the crypto. We've been discussing highly about the artificial intelligence. We've been discussing about the Forex and all things digital. So, you know, and, and it's, very, it's very much enlightened me as well. But uh, I wanted to kind of go back and discuss some things where I'm kind of fluid and where I kind of specialize in is, is more so the real estate lane. Um, through this pandemic, um, we've seen a lot of things going in our economy. And um, I will say that ever since that depression uh, or that quote unquote recession that we had in 2007, 2008, I've noticed a lot of things, you know, we've seen a lot of our friends and family lose their jobs, get on unemployment. Um, we noticed the economy jump up and down. There was a point in time where people was not buying gas, like gas had got so high to where you saw more people walking and riding bikes to work and we was Ubering and lifting. Um, I've seen people lose their houses. I think I've seen... I don't know if the recession was worse than, than this pandemic, but I've seen so many foreclosures. But like I've said before. Sorry, let me just share. I don't think uh, anything uh, is worse than the pandemic. I think the pandemic has literally turned out to be the worst ever. 
because this is a death situation, Larry. It's a health crisis and, and things like that. But go ahead. Somebody's calling again. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, I, I was more so speaking from the financial standpoint, from the financial yeah. standpoint. Yeah, but like I said, I don't like seeing all the deaths and everything either. Um, but I will say this, right? And I've said it many times. You find most of your opportunities in the midst of tragedies. Uh, before the pandemic hit, and I'm speaking from a real estate standpoint, the average interest rate on a home home mortgage loan or home loan was like in the mid threes. Like this pandemic, though it brought a lot of tragedy, it brought a lot of record lows as far as mortgage rates. I saw a mortgage rate that was like a 2.05. Never seen a mortgage rate that low before, ever. That's that's like a record low. So if you don't really know the difference in mortgage rates, you have to really do your research. The difference between you getting a home financed at 2.05 and even a three flat, it's a major difference. Now, another thing is the real estate market has also been very volatile. So a, a lot of houses are selling you know, 60% above their actual value. But right now, with these mortgage rates low, the actual value of the houses are actually starting to level off. So I'm not a financial advisor or I'm not an expert at nothing. But if anyone is in the market of buying a home or wanting to get an investment property, Right now is the best time. I'm not yes, saying that, I'm not saying that the pandemic is getting better because it's still COVID is still out here at an all-time high and people are still dying at a rapid rate. So we we first need to get that under control. But with the interest rates where they are, these are some of the most affordable times that we're in. This is the this is the because here's the thing when this thing turns itself it'll eventually turn itself around we're gonna eventually climb out of the pandemic but when we do when we do watch the mortgage rate shoot shoot up shoot back up because they want their money they, they want their money it's gonna shoot up so so I'm just saying like I said in the midst of tragedy there's always some type of opportunity yes unfortunately we're in a tragedy that's killing people at an alarming rate. You know, at one point, it was just, we was thinking it was just old people. A lot of us young people are dying too. So yeah. don't let the news confuse you because young people are dropping left and right. A lot of us are dropping left and right. But if you're in the business of the real estate, whether it's buying a building, buying land, buying a house, buying an apartment building, financing is so easy and abundant now that this is the best time to jump on it. When we get out of this recession, pandemic, whatever, you're, you're going to see how hard it is. It's going to be very hard because banks are getting their money right now. Trust yes. me. Houses are hitting the market. Houses aren't even standing. They're, they're showing. I, I, I read in a, a, a money magazine, houses are staying on the market average two days. Yeah. Two days. And then they're already getting... They're already getting 20 or 30 offers. So right now, if you want to find something, if you can find something, right now is the best time to get the best rates to find something. Because once you get locked in with the good rate, you're good over the lifespan of that loan. So that's that's kind of how I wanted to start it off with that. So, you know, as far as a real estate standpoint, Right now is a real good opportunity. The house prices are starting to level back down a little bit, but the interest rates are still low. They're still low. I think I went and checked yesterday to see what I've got pre-approved for, and I was pre-approved for a rate for a loan rate is like two point two five. Wow, Larry. Yeah, two point two five is my pre-approval rate. You know what now, I'm saying? With no Larry, is that contingent upon? where you live because you live lower than where I am. Now, that's not contingent on where I live. All right. So here, here's the thing about interest rates, right? And, and APR rates, they're variable. So it might be 2.25 today, but it might shoot up to 275 tomorrow. So mm -hmm. with that rate is good right now, but you got to lock it in when it's good. 
Because I can wait and be like, well, I can wait and do it later. The moment you're really ready to do it or you think you're ready to do it, that ready to shoot right up on you. Or you get slower. So I'm saying right now, the my pre here's the thing. My pre-approval is good for a whole year. But the rate is not locked in until I lock it in. Until you get something. And you- uh, until I make an offer. Yep. So the rate is never locked in until you actually lock it in by acquiring something. But I'm just saying, as far as the real estate, this is the best time frame to acquire something. Absolutely. Why, why everything is starting to be back on the up and up. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Larry. Larry, what else would you like to share in regards to, you know, your favorite topic? And do you think people should be looking into getting homes or, or getting into the real estate game right now? I mean, I, I always think the real estate game, and it's a game. That's really what it is. The real estate game is always, I think, good is open. I think people should definitely do their research first before they just jump right in because right. there's a lot of aspects to it. But I would always say buying, because we really don't own nothing until it's paid off or unless we get around these taxes. But when you're buying I always say buying is better than renting, but yeah. everyone's situation, it might not be ready to buy. But to be honest, we have so many programs. Like mm-hmm. for instance, I had the presentation on NACA. Yeah. That that NACA kind of proved that anybody, because NACA is made for low income people. Yeah. So, and it's made for people who don't have no credit. So if me and you both apply for NACA, you got a 400 credit score, I got an 800 we still gonna get the same loan. Mm-hmm. So when I'm saying when I'm saying it's so many opportunities out here, to be honest, you have certain programs where there's no more excuses. If you really want something, you'll jump out and get it. Because when people say, "Well, I'm waiting for the right time to tell you the truth," there's there is no, no time. The right time. No there's right no time. Thing. Just do it. You just gotta jump and do it. But jump and do it strategically. You yeah. do have to do a strategic. I, we not telling people, oh, just drop everything and jump out there. But if you say, well, when, like when people tell me this, I got a five year plan. In five years, that plan is going to alter because yes. things are going to be different. You got a five year. You got a five year plan on a place where currently, right now, you might be paying seven hundred dollars rent. But in five years, that seven hundred dollars might be twelve hundred dollars rent. That's right. So, so money, and that's another thing. Money changes over time. Money changes. Like, believe it or not, I think I think my my dad was telling me in the seventies. Uh, uh, those those cokes that you get out the grocery store, it was like five cents. Yes, yes. Yes, now, they, now, now they're nearly two dollars. No, in so, New York they are two dollars, Larry. It's no, they're, they're, they're two dollars here too, though. No, but, but look, look how crazy this is. Let me just share this. I do diet Pepsi's or whatever, Larry. Mm-hmm. If it's cold in the fridge, it's like two fifteen for like whatever ten ounce whatever. If mm-hmm. it's warm still on the shelf, it's like a dollar seventy five. Just because it's a little cold. They have it where they are charging you extra. Right. So so money changes. So when you're planning on doing stuff and you want to jump out and do this, this, and this, you just have to jump out and do it. There is no such thing as I'm going to wait and do it. It's not like planning a wedding. It's not like planning, a, you know what I'm saying? It's not like it's not like planning a family trip to Africa yep. or something. Yep. Like, you you damn near gotta treat this like you planning a funeral. You gotta plan a funeral in a week or two. Then bam, you throwing them in the ground. There you go. You can't hold a dead body above ground for so long. The mortician's yeah. not even gonna hold it, but for so long. So you gotta make decisions. But like I also said, you gotta do your own research. Absolutely. No one's you got oh you gotta rent's bad. No rent's not bad. You have to do what you have to do. But at this time opportunities are so vast opportunities are vast and there are many money avenues money avenues you got different type of loans now you got farmers loans 
You got USDA loan. Remember, I was telling you about the ninja loan. Ninja loans. Remind us about that real quick. All right. So th they no longer have these, but oh. it was very, it was very prominent in New York. Mm -hmm. Ninja stands for no income, no job, no assets, and they were giving people loans from the bank strictly based off your credit. So if you had top end credit, they might pre-approve you for a million dollars. And that but was so back in the day. That, well, no, no, it was right before 9-11. It was right before 9-11. So what was going on was the banks were charging people like 30% on the loans. They was pretty much charging you how bookies charge you. Yep. So, so the SEC outlawed those loans. So, but they were called, the nickname was Ninja Loans, but it was no income, no jobs, no assets. So, so like like you're saying, like a loan shark. <laughs> they they was charging people how these payday cash places, title loan places. They was charging people like that, putting ridiculous rates on the loan. That that's really how we kind of fell into a recession. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was one of the reasons. So I mean, it's a lot. You just have to watch the economy. But as far as the real estate, this is some of the best situation that I think we're in right now. That if you're in the business of looking for home ownership, you know, possibly real estate investing. Look at Dr. Eggman, my man. That's your hey. man. <laughs> and if you're looking for real estate investing, or even if you're looking for land, you might want to develop on a piece of land. Right now has some of the best low interest rates. If you look at some of these personal loan rates, these personal loan rates is down to like five, six percent. Wow, Those, that's record lows right now. Right, if you, I, I don't. I, I got an email the other day that I'm pre-approved for an auto loan, one point three nine percent. That these are some crazy. of the lowest auto. So, I'm just saying for people who are, are who are in the business and looking at the real estate side right now, because we're in a we're in an in between situation. Yeah, we're we're still in the midst of a pandemic where people are losing their lives at a rapid rate. But the economy is, the, the rates are so low that anybody can jump in. But at the same time, as soon as something hits the market, it's getting bought right up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. So, so, so right now it's just based off the loan rates. We are, we are at a very primal opportunity right now to get locked into a low rate. And, and as things start to open back up and those rates start to jump, you're already locked in. But you know how a lot of us do. We want to wait until the storm is over, then try to buy, and then we buy at the top end rate. And then we wonder why we stuck in the rut we stuck in because we're never prepared when we're actually supposed to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. That's even that's even an investor too. When we talked about when we talked about investing in the crypto, remember yeah. when everybody was on the Doge coin? Yeah. Remember you asked me. You said, Larry. Uh, the Dogecoin is at this much. I said, Naya, wait for it to drop back under 30 cents. My yes, I said did. that. Yes, I said it was going to eventually drop. Then it's going to shoot back up. It shot back up to 70. I told people, sell, sell, sell. They wanted to wait because remember, social media worldwide, what were they saying? Dogecoin is going to hit a dollar. It's and it never double. did. It never hit a dollar. Like I said, it wasn't. I said, when it hit 70 cents, matter of fact, I think it hit 72 cents. I was talking to Sancho. I said, Sancho, go ahead, sit, sell, sell your Dogecoin. That's it, it topped out. She called me a week later and said, Larry, you was right. I held on too long. Because what happens is us as African-Americans, we jump on things a little too late. We jump on it when there's a, there's a hype around it instead of when there's no hype. If, right. if, you look at, if you look at white people, right, look how white people and other ethnic groups. Let me not just say white. If you look at other ethnic groups, Correct. when they have these conversations that we have on ECI, because trust and believe, they have these conversations way more than we do. Oh, yeah. They invest with each other. They know exactly what's going on before trust we me, ever I, I, I'm going to tell you exactly how they talk. Hey, you know that, that you know that you know that Shiba coin that's it only costs 0. 0.00000 to buy? I think we should jump on that because, you know, that's something new. 
They was on the Sheba coin months before we was. We just now talking about the Sheba coin. But they was on it when it was worth close to nothing. Not that now, they always know. It's the penny stock they know about. But but here's the thing, though. They actually, most of us talk, we try to talk money, 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 and we don't talk ideas. Yeah. Most, most, most other people talk ideas. So it's like this. You hear me talking to real estate now. I'm telling you how low these rates are. Wait when the weather breaks back. Because it's getting a little cold right now. So, you know, we're about to go into a hibernation phase. Yeah. But when around March, April comes around, watch what I tell you. Some of these rates are going to start going up. Some of these mm -hmm. credit card rates are going to start going back up. Some of these personal loan rates are going to start going back up. Some of these auto loan rates are going to start going back up. Some of these mortgage rates are going to start going back up. Because right now, it's, it's already been proven in the numbers. Most people try to save in the wintertime because you know what? We're, we, we, as, we as Black people in America have become very consumer-based. Yes, sir. You got to think about it. Thanksgiving's coming up. We got to stuff our face with the turkey. Yep. Christmas, Christmas. coming up. Christmas coming up. We got to burn the credit card for the children. New Year's is coming up. We got to turn up for the New Year's. Yep. February coming up. We got to go broke for Valentine's Day. Yep. So by the time springtime comes around, we really ain't got no money. But you know what? You got the foreclosures coming. Yes, we do. Because they can't afford it. You got repos coming. You want to know why? Because most of us marginalized, everyday working blue collar people that spend our money, our tax money, on a car that we really can't afford. And can't afford. afford. So with about the rims, March, with the about, rims, with about the rims. March, about March, April, maybe May time frame, depending on when you file, that car will get repoed or that nice house that you put your tax money down on. That oh, I'm getting four or five bedrooms because you know grandma gonna come visit me twice a year, but I don't really need that four or five bedroom house. Right. I really can deal with a two bedroom house with low mortgage payments that you know I can get some equity out of it. Most of us don't think like that. We don't think so, like that. So, think about so glitz and glamour. The we, bling. We, we, we are the tax kings and tax queens. We're going to blow that check on something that we really can't do nothing with. So like I tell people, when things are not hyped up, that's when I really start looking at the market. I say, all right, man, nobody talking about nothing. Let me go and see. I go look right now, Dogecoin at 21 cents. That Shibu was at zero point like five zeros over seven. But you know what? The Bitcoin is steady rising. Steady remember, rising. But, but remember, I said this. I said this when I first came to ECI. Bitcoin and dropped below thirty thousand dollars a share. I mm -hmm. said right now, you can put anything on Bitcoin because it's going to double. And what's happened? It's already doubled and then some. I said it. Yes, you did. And I because put something on it, guys. I did a little when, something. When things drop, you have to watch when things drop. Yes. Sir. When things go up, I like to watch it go up because I don't already put some on it when it's low. Yeah. So just to end my spiel, because I know Dr. Exma about to come with that fire information. I'm ready yeah. to hear Dr. Exma. He about to come with that fire. He about to flame <laughs> me up. Well, so, look, real quick, before you go, I, and I'm going to ask Dr. E the same question. Um, I'm going to be up a little bit. You're going to be on here. Okay, good. So I'll wait. Yeah, please do stay. Stay, because Dr. Exma is actually talking about the same things that we're discussing, getting prepared, life insurance, money, having something for the future, not blowing everything right away. Um, my computer is acting up. Give me one second, guys, as I try to make sure that I get Dr. E's um, platform together here. You know, these devices are, you know, they have a mind of their own. That's another thing. Electronics. The electronics are about to go up again because it's time for Black Friday very soon. And let me tell you guys something. What Black people don't realize is they be targeting us. Black people do not fall for the hype. Every year, y'all go broke buying the TVs, buying the Xboxes, buying all the stupid stuff. Get wiser with the bank. Hold on, Dr. E. I'm trying to get it together. Um, okay. Everything froze on me. In the meantime, let's not have any dead time. Um, what would you like to share before you get started with your presentation? Because it's been a while since we've all oh. been together. 
Yeah, it's been a while. So, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here with you again. Yes. Um, Brother Larry, it's a pleasure always to be on this platform with you because it's always. so, it is so important what you're talking about and people need to understand because I don't know, I guess last time I spoke about Black Wall Street and I told you that $1 would make the round of that of Black, Black Wall Street for like 100 times before it goes to another community, which most likely was a white community. So these people, they were not jumping on the hype and then start buying and not mm. saving. And what you're talking about, Larry, is so fundamental. That is, it's, it's, it's a life skill that we're talking about. And I want people to understand. I joined ACI and I'm so glad that Anaya had this great idea because of the fact that we have to be financially independent. Yes. That we com we're complaining about like uh, white people putting their knees on, on our neck and all that. This is another thing that they are doing also. They, this is part of uh, systemic racism, putting us in a place where we cannot get out of the circle of That's poverty. Right. Mm. It's like, I know people from generation one up to now, they are, they've, they've been always broke. Yeah. Their families are poor for a reason. Mm. And this reason is nothing much but the fact that They've been spending everything they have. No savings, no legacy, no nothing. Did you know that, just to join Border Larry, uh, Border Larry about what he was saying, did you know that uh, some Jews were able to buy properties in New York, buildings for zero dollar? What? Yes. I learned it from a good friend of mine. And what happened is that, and Larry can back me up on this, and um, because he's the expert on real estate here. What happened? I think at some point, New York City was so broke. Yes. That there were a lot of buildings that were standing there, but people couldn't afford to live in them. And soon enough, uh, people were going into these buildings and, uh, and, and living there for free. And you know, when it happens, what happens? People bring the trash, bring all these bad things, rats and, and stuff with them. Um, I can't remember the word, the English word for that, when people just um, come into a property. Qua yeah, squatters. Yeah, they were squat. Matter of fact, Dr. Ezra, you're right. I, I do recall a situation where it was a, it, it used to be an all black community. Mm -hmm. It was an all black community. And it got ran down so bad, people kind of abandoned this one building. And right. this group of Jews came together and they kind of revitalized, they revitalized the whole community. They started, they started with one building, but they bought the whole community. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, right. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And as we speak, the same thing is happening as we speak in, in uh, uh, areas like in the Bronx where gentrification is happening. Down in Brooklyn, if you go on uh, Atlantic Avenue, you see these old brownstone, old buildings that, that are standing there. They are being bought as we speak. And investors, um, people that can do it, people that have the information and the knowledge, now they are buying into those yeah. properties. Because what happened, at some point, these properties had no value. I remember I have an aunt that's been here like for 40, more, 40 plus years. And he was, she was offered to buy one of these properties, like a, a three, um, three family building for $125,000 right on Atlantic Avenue. Now, the same building is worth $2.5 million. Yes, it is. And it's just about 20 years ago. So imagine what happened. The big change that happened was Barclays Center. Yep. Barclays Center changed the whole area, dynamic. the whole dynamic. And then you had that mall that came across right across the street from Barclays Center before, and then Barclays Center. And then these properties went on skyrocketing in terms of prices. So now, as Brother Larry was explaining to you, the, 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 the rates are low. This is the time to buy. 
And one of the things that I've realized is that we refuse to own things that are valuable. Yes, yes. Having the nice car, the best car, the nice looking car, $120,000, that uh, uh, Ferrari, all these you know, big name cars, once you get them out of the lot, they depreciate. It hmm. depreciates. If you want to try what I'm saying, one buy one of these cars and then spend one day driving it around and bring it back to the dealership and ask them at what price they will take it back from you. And you will understand what I'm saying. And then another thing is important to invest to buy things that are inflation proof. Mm. Buy things that have value that, that will not decrease over time. This is what inflation is. At some point, I think 10 years ago, inflation was like around 3%. Now it's around 6%. And the reason is that you have 700,000 people that died of COVID. Yes. The workforce of the country went down. So when it happens, the value of the dollar decreases. So somebody that owns a house, equity is going up. So that person that bought that, that, that building, if my aunt did buy that building for $125,000 at that time, now it's worth $2.5 million. Correct. So even if the dollar went down in terms of value, equity went up. Yes. So even if she, has, she, she, she would sell by now, $125,000 at that time was worth about a million dollars at that time, but because if she sells right now, she's going to get 2.5 mil, which makes that this house is inflation proof. So people need to understand, Black folks, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand where value is. Yes. And then, especially in a country that, he, that is here, like a capitalist country, you don't own you have no rights or almost no rights. That's right. You might have the right to be social, you know, to go around. You may even have the right to vote. But guess what? Who, who has the power? Who has the money? Who can invest? Who can put money in a, a, a politician's pocket to help them raise funds to win their campaign? Who can do that? The guy with the nicest sneakers? who cannot pay a fair right to go to work mm. or the guy that owns $2.5 million sitting in an account as asset. Correct. So we need to know what we're doing. We cannot do, we cannot want to walk the walk and not talking the talk. Now we're doing it right now, but for you to understand the need is there, the opportunity is right now. Do not wait. I know people that was like, oh, I have a plan to buy my, my house in five years. Five years, life happens. Yes. In five years, somebody died in the family. And then that savings goes. Somebody gets sick. You have to, uh, to be hospitalized. That saving goes. Down. So by the time five years arrives, do you have enough money to buy that house? I bet you know. No. And, and so speaking basically, of, sorry, and then speaking of, for the sake of time, we have others that have just joined us, Dr. E. Um, I know this is such a heated discussion, but I also know you have a very lengthy platform tonight, and I'm so happy that we are going to share that because it goes all hand in hand with what Larry started off with, what you're sharing, and I would love for us to get on this side of the um, the um, show, not the show, <laughs> but the, the presentation, because we do have people um, that have joined and I want them to get as much information as possible as we work together to help the community. Can you see my screen? I have shared the screen already, Dr. E. Yes, I can see the screen. Uh, the screen, And basically, uh, I think that was a good segue to yes. into my presentation. People, invest money in things that do own value. And basically, this is what happened. And I'm going to try to make it short. When you were a baby, you had your goals, which mm -hmm. was like drink milk and uh, run around and play. When you start going to school, 
then you start seeing uh, expectations. You need to have those grades. You need yeah. to go higher and then you need to make your mark. But then later on, you start working and you start getting some bills to pay. Okay? Story changes. Now you have a baby. Now you're married. Now you have a family to take care of. So as your needs tend to increase, so should be your goals. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you, it will happen a time where you will have needs and then you have more needs and you will not have the opportunity to live by up to those needs. For example, um, you missed the point, you didn't listen to Border Larry, and then you are 55 now, and you didn't purchase that house. Hmm. You were like, okay, I'll have the time, I'll have the time, but then life keeps on happening, and then your kids have kids, and then you have to spend that money. And then soon enough, at 65, you retire. What happened to that plane to buy your house? Fine. Because now you're retired. You're a retiree. Are you bringing an income? No. Can you go ask for a loan? No, because you're not working. So that time passed. And now you have to live with your, with your children. You want to live with your daughter, with your son, and then you don't own the money. Nothing is coming in then you have to live and wait for them to feed you, you know, to take care of you. It shouldn't be that way. And you have the power to change it now. It's really now the time for you to do it. I'll tell you what. Uh, do you know that in this country, as we speak right now, there are a lot of people that are leaving, even after retirement, they are getting money every day. So basically, thanks, Ayana. That's this kind of slide where you know exactly what you want to do. And basically, this slide is talking about your time horizon and the risks that you have to face. Basically, you can take, uh, you can take those risks and then you look at opportunities. You can do short-term term, short -term goals from zero to four years and then mid-term or long-term. Basically, what we were talking about earlier it covers everything. Buying a property covers all of that. You can have short-term goals. You say, okay, I'm going to buy this property and flip it in four years and make $50,000, $100,000 income. Or it could be midterm, or it could be long-term. You can have this home and you keep it within the family as a legacy. Mm. You pass it on to your children. And though your children might pass it on to their children, children. So that's how it is. That's why people, we always make that say that, oh, people that have money always get money. It's because that money calls money. Mm. It doesn't happen like in a, in a, in a, like by magic, like you just pull it out of the hat, you know? No, you have to have a plan. So basically tonight, my, the, my topic is again, is going to be about life insurance as a way to create that legacy that we're talking about. But there are other tools. We will be talking about them as well also uh, with um, in the next uh, opportunities with uh, um, ECI. Yeah. So basically, uh, as I was saying earlier, not only if you've got dreams, but you also have responsibilities as you mm -hmm. grow up. And that picture showed you as a baby, somebody was taking care of you. But now it's the time for you to take care of yourself and then take care of your babies. Okay. And one way for you to do that, it's to set up plans. One of the plans that you can set up to ensure legacy for your, for your children or for your children's children is a life insurance. A life insurance is one of the most important tool that you could use to make sure that when you're gone and then you're no longer here to take care of those people that you love, you leave something in the bank. You leave something behind that has value, which they can use to further themselves and then to become, to continue what you wanted to do for them. There That's are people right. that died. And then because of the, because they had the life insurance, then that benefit, when it gets into the family, they can purchase a home. 
Because what is a life insurance? It's basically a contract on your life that says, if I die, actually when I die, because not if I die, because this is something that we all have to face it, right? Mm -hmm. So not if, when I die, then you as the insurer, which is the company that signed that contract with you, has you have to give to my family this amount of money because this is why I've been paying you, putting my contribution every time. So basically that's one important contract. Why? Did you know that a life insurance is guaranteed that you're not gonna be taxed on that money? You get $1 million form of life insurance. This is $1 million even that comes in. Uncle Sam will not perceive any tax, zero tax hmm. from that money. Okay. Uh, last time I explained the difference between giving a gift to your child and purchasing a life insurance. The gift is taxed. And it could be taxed up to 38%. Hmm. So imagine you give $1 million to your child and then the state or government has to take out $380,000 of that 1 million. And imagine you're leaving that 1 million, that same 1 million to your, ch your child or your children. And then after you die, the company signs a check of $1 million even to this, to this, to, to, to your, um, your beneficiaries, your children, your wife or whomever you decided to put on that life insurance policy as a beneficiary. Imagine the difference that, that, that can make. Just imagine. If you're listening to me right now, shut your eyes and imagine. It could have been that, okay, I always wanted to buy my, that house for my family. This is my dream house. But I could never do it because I could never come up with enough money to put as a down deposit. But at least contributing every month, little by little, could be 100, 200, or 50, or $20. Making sure that when I die, not if I die, when I die, then I leave something that's valuable to my family. And then they can use it to further my legacy. They would say, well, my dad left me $1 million, let me $200,000, $100,000, $50,000, as little as $20,000 so that they can bury me. And then some money left over, I can do something about it. So basically life insurance offers you, uh, could you scroll back down? Yeah, I'm gonna just talk about the benefits. Uh, Lower it a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So there are two sides of the benefits. Basically, there are a lot of benefits purchasing your life insurance. You have, it's a for whole life. You have a lifetime coverage that is guaranteed whenever you die. You die in 10 years, five years, 20 years, 50 years. There will be, uh, you don't have to worry about um, your burial because there will be enough money for you to be buried properly and you know with decency. And then there will be money left over for your, for your family, for your children okay. to continue living without you being there. That's important, it, that's guaranteed. And then I already said it, this money is tax-free, okay? And then in a whole life insurance, you have two very important things. A whole life insurance is designed to be a savings account as well as a, um, a life insurance that protects you, like when you die, that your family can get that money. So none of us are going to be younger in a few years. Mm, we are going good old. Point. Good point. So it will happen any anytime it might happen. Young people dying too. I think Brother Larry said it earlier. Now young people are facing COVID, the Delta variant. This is what they are facing and they are dying too. So having a life insurance, even on your children can help you with burial and also other things. But if it's a whole life insurance, there is this thing. You have two benefits in the life insurance. You have the death benefit, that's when you die, that chunk of money, that lump sum that goes to your family. And you also have the living benefit. Those living benefit guarantees you money while you're living. Mm. And it comes from the form of cash value. 
So that cash value, it's emergency funding. I always tell people that. Don't think that you need that cash value and then the first sneaker that comes out, the first easy that comes out, you want to get it for 1000 and then you're going to take money from that. No, it needs to be emergency cash. If there is a life situation, there is an accident that happened, or God forbid, you lose your job for a few months and then you cannot pay, then you can take some money to allow you to uh, survive until you can get back on your feet without mm -hmm. having to do a GoFundMe or asking people for money around. There is one saving that you can take money from, and this is called the cash value. Having a whole life insurance, I made a comparison last time, is like have, oh, owning your house. This is why I love the fact that Larry was about to was uh, discuss about this earlier, because having a whole life is that you own your policy and you own it for life. You make decision left and right because you are the owner. As opposed that, as opposed that uh, you have a term life insurance and then you're renting and then you have to answer to a landlord. The big difference is that in, from the term life, there is no cash value. There is no guarantee that God forbid something happens to you, you can go and get some of that money that is being saved for you so you can use it. So uh, what we're looking at, it's a comparison. You know, I'm not going to get into the details, but when you apply for a life insurance policy, it's a tool that allows you to retire with any problem as well, because because of the cash value that you can have from the whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, you sit down with a financial advisor or a life insurance agent. Mm. That person will sit down with you and go through all your uh, needs. They call it needs assessment or needs analysis to make sure that this policy that you're taking will cover your needs and will be able to carry over to your family so that after you're gone, then there is something that you leave as a legacy. Mm. At least they will be saying that, oh, my grandfather left me that check. And with that check, that's how we bought this house. Right. Okay. So basically, uh, I could discuss about more things. I don't know if you want to ask me a few questions, Anaya. But well, uh, we, have if you a, can bring we have a few people that are on. So my, you know, this is the thing. I I do this, Dr. E, and I thank you so much for sharing um, from your heart, because I know you're very passionate and it's just amazing that you and Larry were basically on the same page as we always are when we come together. It's just an instinct thing. Um, I already know a lot about insurance. Of course, there's a lot more that I'm about to learn from Dr. E. Um, so I'll save my questions when we meet up. But I open the floor to anybody that has any questions at this time. If you want to unmute yourself, um, we have Stephanie Winter who's back with us, which I would love for her to introduce herself anyway, and um, get some of her thoughts um, as well. Steph, she got the camera off, but um, are you able to, there you go. Oh, I'm here. Hey. Hey, give me one second. I can't even see you. Give me one second. No problem. How are you? I appreciate that. I actually was getting a lot of information from uh, that. Uh, that presentation it was really, really, really uh, informational. I really appreciate that information. Um, myself, again, I, I really appreciate being here again with this community. Why? Because I'm here to learn. I love the added education that everybody has and the willingness to support each other because uh, there's a lot that I need to learn with respects to the insurance side of things. So I really do appreciate the community. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know me, of course, my name is Steph Winter. Uh, I am a mother of one. I'm a 39 year old mother of one and also a grandmother of one. Uh, and my um, my background is the financial markets. I am an investor in the financial markets. I actually take care uh, of all of my finances through the foreign exchange market, the stock market, and of course the crypto market. Um, I pry on teaching the average person on how to get into these markets. Why? Because 
it's that residual income that could actually help you to pay for things like this, where you're actually going in and getting yourself insured, um, not about the money, but about the freedom, the freedom to live good, um, knowing that you're taken care of, um, and not also having to work for every single dollar that you have, you can actually get a chance to be able to learn how to make a residual income so that you can open your mind to things like this. And this is why I say, um, being part of this community where we can all collaborate and give that great information to one another. This is what I love. Um, so yeah, I definitely am so happy to be here. I'm extremely excited to be here. And if you guys have any questions for me, I would definitely love to help and answer as many questions as I possibly can. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stephanie. And that's that's what it's all about with ECI, bringing the people together because, you know, you know, Larry said it so well, and Dr. E, you know, stated it as well. Um, but so just to let you guys know, full transparency, um, I was on the Dr. Oz show again today, now that we're done with that segment. Um, I am a contributor on the Dr. Oz show. And funny enough, you know, for the past few months, he's been hitting me up, hitting me up because he knows the work that I do. Like when you're in production and media, these people like follow you. They have to know who they're working with, right? So I never talk about what I'm about to do. I just talk about it after. Funny enough, today's segment was about stress. And the work that I do is so stressful because I'm a humanitarian and I give back so much to our people that sometimes my body shuts down. And tonight, what are we talking about, right? Medical, health, you know, wellness, you know, how do we secure ourselves for the future? And Dr. Oz always gives a ton of tips, but one thing that I really appreciated today was our time because we didn't have the live audience because of COVID. You know, our time was so in intimate today before we taped because he was like, tell me more, Naya, about this work that you do. Like, how do you do it? And what's the percentage of people, you know, that are getting the services out there? And what's the percentage of people that are, you know, in need and this, that, and we're just talking and I'm spitting off information and he loves that, he eats it up. And the reason I share that is because it goes hand in hand with what we're discussing tonight, right? And it goes hand in hand as to why we do what we do. Because we as a community have to look out for each other. We cannot sit here and keep playing games with our lives. And, and people are dropping dead at, it's so bad. Like my sister was just recently murdered, okay? And I'm just like, oh my God, not even 30. When you guys talk about, these dynamics and these issues, here she is like living her best life and something, you know, tragic happens to her and it hits close to home. So we as a community have to look at the future and we have to know that things could happen at any moment. And so I love tonight's, you know, platform because we're talking about real estate, we're talking about health and wellness, but what's most important about this conversation is us trying to figure out what's the next steps for us. How do we make something? How do we leave a legacy? How do we show our community that we care? But most importantly, how do we take care of our damn selves, right? Because we can't help nobody if we ain't doing the right thing. So I appreciate that, Stephanie, and I welcome you back. And I, I'm so happy that you're back with us. And it's all about getting it together at this time. Because at the end of the day, you know, being on the Dr. Oz show is great. I'm a national contributor, but the bottom line is I think with what's happening in today's society, they're also seeing us now and the work we do and they're valuing it. And they're realizing, oh wow, this community struggles, but they keep pushing. We keep working, we keep coming mm -hmm. together. So I love it that we're back together. So that's like my little piece. And um, this is my shout out to Dr. Oz too. Thank you for not giving up on me when I'm fighting for Haiti. Look right here, Haiti and our people. For like six months, I was not on set because I couldn't get it. Right, Dr. E? Haiti is such a problem, but whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's been a, mm -hmm. a, a wild few months. But anyway, um. That's that's my spiel, and um, I'm happy that we're back together, guys, and we're going to do more. We are going to do more. Trust and believe ECI is about to launch in a new direction. Yes, and we have people watching on Instagram. Welcome, welcome, welcome. They said I speak well. You all speak well. They're saying Caribbean girl, Caribbean guys. We're all like Caribbean, and secretly, Larry is from the Caribbean as well. Amen. Amen. Listen, <laughs> I just... He, he is a well, Haitian from Miami. Secret. It what ain't no saying? secret. It ain't no um, secret. No. I'm from there. 
you and found what you're everything. saying is really true because uh, um, I'm sad to be talking about this, but I just lost um, a member of my extended family due to COVID back home in Haiti. You know, okay. it's like, um, how would they say that? He's uh, the brother of my cousin's husband. See, and now that's passed. complicated. Wait, hold on. He <laughs> is, wait, he is what now? That's Stephanie Lewis, you know. He's my, my, my cousin's husband brother. Cousin's husband's brother. I got it now. Correct, okay. yeah. So basically, he was asthmatic, and he was told to take the vaccine, and we refused. So mm. now, finally, it caught up with COVID-19. Mm. I don't know if he had the variant, the D variant, or I don't know, the regular COVID. Wow. But it just passed, and that made me sad because that's a life that could have been saved. Mm. He was a very right. funny guy, but people still have their thoughts about vaccine, which I respect. Right. But if you are in a place where more than 20 million people has taken their shots and they still with us, that's a telling. I don't know if, why you would want to wait, what, why would want to get better statistics? Because it's right there. You know a friend, you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that took the shot. I Did will say- survive? This not to, not to cut you off or anything, but Doc, I actually have those pre-existing rare conditions, so I'm not taking the COVID vaccination. I got tested right before I went on set today. I'm negative, but my thing, and and of course, everybody has the freedom of speech and right. But with me, because I have been hospitalized so much, I have I have this rare condition. I'm not taking that chance because when my body shuts down, it shuts down. And I just had surgery actually on the 22nd of October mm -hmm. on my birthday. That was my birthday present. And so was a cold grilled, no, a cold cheese sandwich from the hospital when I woke up af after anesthesia. So okay. that's like the funniest thing ever. But um, I know like, God forbid that COVID, whatever is in that vaccination if I, whatever reason, my body doesn't agree with it, I am like a dead woman again. Like I, I, yeah. I can't take that risk because it's so painful to be in the hospital where they're constantly sucking the blood out, injecting me with crap, you know, keeping me monitored. And I just personally, but you know, everybody has their rights. Stephanie, let's ask you, are you uh, vaccinated over there in Canada? Or are they forcing it like no, they are I'm actually, here? Um, they are forced, they are enforcing it. Um, my personal, like my thing is, again, like yourself, um, my body shuts down with certain, certain medication and I personally don't like needles first and foremost. Um, and to be honest with you, I just don't think I'm educated enough on everything that's going on. Like, I feel like if you need the PVR from me, I can do the tests on a regular basis. Me too. Um, but I really, I also really do think that we've lost the, we've almost lost the hope of um, our human rights. Like we don't have the opportunity to do what we please anymore. Right. And I just don't agree with that. Um, if I don't want to take it, I will definitely make sure that I take requirements and make sure that I definitely am securing myself. I'm not going to go out there and you know what I mean? Do damage to anybody that's around me, but I'm just, I'm really scared at this present time pertaining to it. And yeah, it's affecting me, but then it's not affecting me because my business, I see, you see me on my bed. Majority of my business is online at home. So well, earlier, what I said, not to my defense, but I, I said that I respect <laughs> I that. It. Yeah. I, I said, I respect their decisions because right. basically this is what it is about. Like if somebody wants to go for surgery, unless if it's something that they cannot decide for themselves because they are not ready to uh, make a consent because they are, they have a mental issue or whatever it is. And then or if it's an emergency that's so grave that you don't have any other means, sometimes you even have to find out whether they're family members or if there was like uh, something writing that this person leaves before you even operate on them. So they still have the right to say no to an intervention, even if it's for saving to save their lives. But, you know, so that's basically why I said I respect that. I don't know. Uh, 
I, I encourage people to do it if they can, if they want to, and people that do not want to, or especially if they have a, a medical condition that prevents yeah. them, maybe because they are allergic to certain components, like a regular vaccine, like flu vaccine, they were allowing people that are allergic not to take it. So COVID is a different thing because it's a pandemic, mm. but uh, yeah. But I'm not going to get into uh, that discussion because I think that people can decide and uh, people can make a decision if they, yeah, if well, well, they do the do it, then that's good. So here's the thing. That's what Stephanie was saying. And I concur with Stephanie. They're taking away our rights. So it's yeah. like literally, and, and, and Larry's going to speak next, but let me just share this. Last year, again, in the hospital, um, I had to have another surgery last year. I'm telling you, I have the weirdest body and God only knows why I'm still here. I had to have an emergency surgery <laughs> last year. Because you have a mission. Yes, amen, a purpose and a mission. But it was like the craziest thing because right before they had to operate, like it wasn't like a play play thing. It was like a serious thing. And they had to shove that COVID testing. That was like the second time I took it up my nose to my brain to get the sample. I'm like, can you just put me under anesthesia now? Because this thing hurts. Like five people had to hold me down. I'm like, I'm already distressed. You're about to cut into my body again. And you have to, five people have to hold me down just to get the sample. And by the time they took the sample, not to be disgusting, but it was all bloody and stuff because I'm freaking out. So in essence, it, it's traumatizing what we're going through. Um, but thank you for understanding us, Dr. E. And thank you for sharing your story too, Stephanie. Um, Larry, go ahead. You you have something that you want to share. Praise right. the Lord. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. But he's yeah. not like that. I, yeah. I gotta agree with Stephanie. But look, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all, I had to take the vaccine, right? So Ooh. it was it was listen, I'm, I'm cool. gonna tell you what happened. I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm. So my so Dr. Edgman, you down in Miami, right? Or you in New York? He's in New York. I'm in New York. Okay, so let me explain my situation. I stopped working because I was just, where I'm at in my investments, I'm comfortable enough to where I can live off certain residuals. Mm -hmm. I stopped working to go back to school full time. Now, if you know anything about all these schools over here in America, there has been a mandate to where they're disenrolling people for not being fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So my yep. school told me straight up, if I'm not fully vaccinated by October 31st, which I just got fully vaccinated October 25th, they were disenrolling everybody. Yeah. My, school, my school, ECPI, just disenrolled nationwide like over 6,000 people. So 6,000 people just got disenrolled. So in my head, I was like, you know what? These are my human rights, like she just said, bump that. So I decided, all right, I can leave school. So I had about two or three months to decide this. Every job I apply for, whether it be federal, state, or whatever, if if you're not fully vaccinated, they're not hiring you. So That's it, crazy. It got to a point. Yeah, it's happening in Canada too. Yeah, it got to a point with me. I had to force vaccinate myself because even though I even though it's certain, like I said, I've researched the vaccine. You know, I still don't. I have my reservations about it. It was to the point where. I can't even do nothing unless I'm vaccinated. Mm. Like, cause there's still certain countries that won't even let you come there unless you're vaccinated. So it was like, you know, you're cutting out my education. I can't get specific jobs that I'm eligible for. And I can't go to certain locations. I, it, was, it forced me to get the vaccine. I didn't want to, but it forced me to get it. Larry, where are now, you? I'm not, where are you? I'm in, I'm in Virginia right now. Mm. I'm in the state of Virginia. Oh, so I'm, that's why. So, okay, Virginia yeah. doesn't play. They don't play. Virginia ain't playing. But that's I'm about, but it's like that in Georgia, too, because I was thinking about moving, going ahead and moving back home, but then all my cousins was like, bro, if you come down here, just just be prepared to hit the block. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk about the block because we got a doctor here with a... That's <laughs> crazy. The one thing, if, if anybody's ever truly been from Georgia or Florida. No, I know. Let, let me say something. We've been in a pandemic, but they ain't been in no pandemic. And anybody on here that's listening and watching me, y'all know y'all people down there in Georgia and Florida ain't wore no mask not one time. <laughs> right. I was, I was just going to say. 
Listen, I, never. I was just in Florida. They walk around like they've never heard of a pandemic. Listen, yeah, listen. Wait, wait. Yeah. Let, tell you this? You. Let me tell you this last part. Like, you probably don't even know this. That The state governor or whatever that crazy man name is, he said... If DeSantis. Any, DeSantis. Is he said, if they force you to, they can get a fine up to, I think, five to $10,000 if a company or restaurant tells you to put on a mask. So I was lost my mind. I said... The mayor, the mayor of Atlanta wanted to have a two-year shutdown so that Atlanta could get back on track. Ryan Kemp said, look, I'm not making no mask mandate. And he made her, he he made her step down from being the mayor of Atlanta. The oh, black that's community. why. That's why she's not running again. Another right, because because the, the 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 governor of Georgia said, I'm not giving no mask mandates. You can walk wherever you want with no mask on, no nothing. So with all that. I can't even go back to Georgia right now because it's so rampant. It never shut it's down. So look, rampant. Look, at spring, yeah. look what happened just at spring break. Look what happened at spring break. There were 55,000 new cases in Miami alone. Right. I was in Miami at that point too. So, so that's care. what I'm saying. So to be honest, I'm not saying that the vaccine is going to work. I don't know the effect. Is. I really don't. When something's man-made and when we don't make it, I'm going to question everything. I just only took it because it started cutting off all my resources. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't get no job. And I'm not working at Dollar Tree. Because that's, that's the only place that'll hire you here where they don't care if you got COVID or not. You know but, what? But I'm just saying, I'm I have no choice but to get it. I ain't have a choice. So, But, but, that, but I'm just piggybacking on what Stephanie just said. Absolutely. Your right is really being taken away. Now, with her, she has a home-based business, which is great. But for most of us that got to either still go to class or most of us that, quote-unquote, work from home, even some of these banks, I, some of my old employees, at Cal, some of my old co-workers at Capital One told me, they working from home and still had to get the vaccine. But Capital One going to fire yeah. them. Yeah, I'm telling you. So it's, yeah. it's, it's getting to the point where, where you don't, if you don't have your own business, if you're not self-sufficient, you're gonna get that vaccine. You're yeah. gonna get. Mm -hmm. Even they if you have your own business, if you're gonna meet up with people and then you are in, uh, into providing service to people, yeah, you gotta be aware because you could have people coming into your business, and if they know that you are not vaccinated, whatever they have, they can blame it on you, and it becomes a lawsuit. Yeah. So this is this time around is really we are learning a lot. But it's crazy times because you're going to see all kind of things. Besides, uh, I remember last time during presentation, I told you that um, life insurance will have a price hike, oh, especially. So can you, it's been okay, announced you know this is, November so 6th. Great, great, great segue. I'm going to step away from the computer, um, but you guys talk about this because this is why this is so important for ECI. And don't forget, I have another um, commentary. I want everybody to chime in. Um, so don't leave. So, uh, Dr. E, please tell them what you just shared with me. I believe it was last night. For everybody watching on all platforms, for those that are listening on social media, on Instagram, et cetera, this is insane, but I'm so glad we have experts in so many different fields. And again, for the record, I want people to understand, these are theoretically our opinions that we're pulling together to share with the community. You cannot sue an IAA. You cannot sue anybody on here. Dr. E is actually a licensed, uh, excuse me, licensed life insurance guy. So he's actually like, you know, an advisor, expert, whatever. But for anybody that, that thinks that this is something that you guys could, you know, sue us later or what have you, don't do it. I'm, I'm giving you that disclaimer now. Don't come for Anaya or the rest of the family on ECI. Thank you. That's the disclaimer. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a very important one because uh, basically here's one of the things that we want people to understand. We are not to the point where we can tell people what to do, okay? Well, the information that we're giving out is information that you would use as you see fit. We're just telling you the truth and just the truth. Not to influence you, not to do anything. You'll see that I didn't provide my personal contact. I let this to Anaya. If you want to reach out to her, she can uh, um, help you make an informed decision to reach out to me so I can give you more education, so I can enlighten you more 
or give you more directions. But the final words, the final decision is yours to make. And I want you to understand this. So what I told Anaya, and we were talking about the topic yesterday, is that, and last time I also did say that during the presentation, is that because of the fact that more than 700,000 people died in the country. And these people are young, mid-age, or old-age people. But what happens is that it increases one of those uh, um, parameters that we use to look at life in general in this country, which is life expectancy. This is one of the parameters that goes into economics a lot because using life expectancy, you're losing how much people, how much money people make, you can calculate something called GDP, which is the gross, uh, uh, um, uh, I can't remember the definition, but you can calculate the GDP and know yes, whether yes. the, okay, great, thank you. So which is how much money people make and how old they are, and then you can look at the market and knowing, okay, this is the type of work that those people are making and et cetera, et cetera, and make decisions about uh, economic within the country. But because of all these people that died, life expectancy went down, which means that, and I predicted it, because of life expectancy going down, life insurance is based on an equation where you are expected to live a certain amount of time. And then when you die, I never said if you die, when you die, because it's going to happen anyway at any time. And you can predict that. Then they say, well, the company has to pay you that benefit. Okay, at face value. If you signed up for 150000 this is what you get. And it's tax-free. You signed up for 50000 this is what you get. This is a contract between you, okay, the applicant and the company that is the insurer, which gives you that insurance that when you die, we're gonna provide that lump sum for you. Now, because life expectancy went down and it went down by two point for black folks and Hispanics, mm. which means that- oh, Wait, people, sorry, can you share that again? I've been listening, but the life insurance, no, the life mm. expectancy for black and Hispanics has gone down. Yes, for white people too, but it always goes lower for black folks because of our uh, social economic situation. Ooh, say that again. I need y'all to catch that black people. <laughs> say it again. Because of your social economical status, mm. when this thing happened, like expectancy happened, it decreases, it also decreases further down for us, black folks and brown folks. So what, be, what does that mean? People that were up to leave 77, up to 77 years, they went down. Now they're no longer going to leave to 77. They're going to leave to 75 years. Yeah. Jesus. Yes. We may go down white a folks, bit more. It, for yeah. white folks, it went down 1.5. Which means they got that, more money. They can take care of themselves and no crazy thugs are out there shooting each other on every corner. Don't piss me off tonight, Black people. Yes, I'm you sorry. got it. But then another important thing also, Anaya, is that, is that what, because what Larry, they have money... Wait, hold on. Hold on, Dr. Key. What, Larry? Because you know I'm going to fall out. I said, that's y'all New Yorkers. Oh, y'all Blacks are so dumb. Shut up, Larry. Hey, look. All y'all all y'all gangsters in Harlem. Brooklyn, the Bronx, Southside Jamaica, Queens. He know every hood. Young hoods. New Jersey across the bridge. All that. Y'all shoot. Because of what Larry just said, this is my disclaimer. And nobody shot me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and nobody shooting me. Well, oh, I, so, I got to say this too. The streets no more is so bad. No, he I got to say this too. All the people <laughs> over there in Canada, you know, you know Drake's hood. Toronto, Quebec, Albuquerque, uh, what's all what's another uh Vancouver, all that. All that. All right. that. All that. They down all in that. Canada too. But guess what? Oh, Which is one more reason for them to get their life insurance on point. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta get it on point. Yo. Because they don't know when this when somebody's gonna pull up on them. <laughs> <laughs> 
he said they don't know what they got their foot up. They don't know. All right, See, so the one, thing, the one thing about people in the South, right? Yeah, we directly come from the slaves, but we live. You know, my grandma, my grandmama just turned ninety two on Halloween, and she still <laughs> driving, she still driving around in her Nissan Versa. Not the Nissan, bye, Larry. Yeah. Bye. But listen, this is this is listen. This is we funny, are in ECI for funny. a reason. It's I'm happy funny, that you bring this funny. up because it's sad. I have my little thing about about this as well. Yeah. Uh, one of the major issues that they've had in, with us, based on what you just said, Larry is that they fought hard enough to exterminate us, but we black people are so tough. Mm. And then genetically, even of like, even uh, inside of making it, instead of making us weak, they made us even stronger. Even stronger. I'll tell you brother, um, physiologically in medicine, there's an explanation for that. Okay. And that word is telomerase. This is the gene for longevity. That's wow. why you'd see many black people, they go around living up to 125. I think last time I read about somebody that is 128 and is still living and it's a black person. Even oh, in yeah. Haiti, we have, even in Haiti, we have this lady that just passed. She was 109. Yeah, my great aunt just died. She was 123. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She was wow. Yeah. So basically, all right, so, but guess what? Just for your information, here's what happened, Larry. If your grandma, your great-grandma had a life insurance, mm -hmm. okay? By 100, by year 100, okay? She would be able to cash that lump sum, even when she's still alive, and open up a trust and put that money right there. And then our children could start taking advantage because there are companies that carry the life insurance up to 121 years before they pay you. And when they pay you, they're not going to just pay you the face value. They're going to pay you all dividend and uh, um, all dividend also, you know, and interest. So the cash value comes with it. For example, here's the thing about cash value. You apply for $100,000 life insurance, but if it's a whole life insurance, every time, and this is what the slides is showing, this is what I'm talking about it, uh, uh, right now, Anaya. It says how whole life works. So basically, when you look at the slide with me, you will see that there is a company that's called Cash Value. Mm -hmm. There are those life benefit, uh, living benefits, and those cash value also grow into dividends. So when you do put that $100,000 $100 monthly as your premium in this life insurance, it's like you're investing as, as well you are making a savings. Yep. Why? You put down $100, for example. The company put take the fee, which is like $80, and then $20 goes into that fund that constitutes your cash value. And there, this is money that grows over time. The longer you have this life insurance policy, the higher is your cash value. So people that had hard time, hardship during COVID, some of them, they were able to take money from that cash value to allow them to survive during COVID because mm. they were not working. They couldn't work. They couldn't work. So they were able to take some money, some of that money and, and be able to continue to live without any problem. And then when even if they have to pay this back, they pay back to their own policy which is their own loan, is that you, 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 you take a loan from your own money and then you can pay it back. You may not pay it back depending on how you, 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 you sign that, um, uh, that contract to get that loan. But that money that you have in there, that $20, not only it builds your cash value, but also it carries dividend because this is money that some insurers, some insurance company are able to invest into the market. So that little dividend that you get, as you can see, you have many options. You can have option one, you can receive that dividend in cash. This is a check that is sent to you every month that you have this. Sure. It could be 100, it could be 500, it could be up to 1000, depending on how much money you have in this cash value. And then, or you can apply this cash value towards your premium payment, which means that if you started off paying $100 per month, when your cash value starts going, you apply it on your premium, it lowers your premium. So at some point, you might see that 
instead of paying $100 for your policy, for your premium monthly, now you're paying $80, $85. Wait, $60. sorry, how do, how do we deduct that $20? So basically, you have the choice on what you what what what's once you receive it. Like, yeah. from what I get is you can basically receive your um, dividends in certain ways, like, yes. and one of them is you can get it in cash. You can or get it in cash. Ways, you can apply it to your premium annual your payment. Premium. So if it was that normally one hundred dollars, it would lower it now so that every single month we you would pay less. Pay eighty dollars or. Depending on if we how much we placed in or how much we're getting for the dividend, it can go from sixty to seventy. I actually like that. I would actually more right. so apply it to mm -hmm. the premium right. payment. It makes more sense. It makes, it makes more sense. Yeah. But if you want, what you can do, yeah. you can you can reinvest those dividends. You may not cash it. You might say to the company, okay, deposit those dividends into my cash value, which makes your cash value grow as faster, because that money is reinvested. And this is what we call in in uh, economics compound interest is that you're making interest on top of your interest mm -hmm. you're making interest let me repeat that you're making interest on, on top of your interest what it means literally uh you 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 made a hundred dollars uh in dividend and you made 100 uh one thousand dollars in cash value for that same policy if you take out that one hundred dollars and then you spend it that's the cash format. If you want, you can apply this dividend toward your premium and lower it. So for example, if you were to pay uh, $1,000 for that policy for a year, they're gonna deduct that 100 from that thousand. Now your policies for next year is gonna be 900. So now you end up paying less than $90 every month for that same policy. But the policy has the same value. The value never changes, right? It just lowers your premium. And this is good, especially when people do retire, because social security doesn't pay them that much, then mm -hmm. they can lower the premium and pay less and still keep the policy alive without any problem. That's it. Or, yeah, or if they want, they can put that dividend, instead of cashing it out, they can say, okay, I'm gonna leave it and it's reinvested. And that's when it carries interest on top of interest. And then your cash value goes faster. So if you, don't have, if you don't have a need for the money right now, you may say, well, okay, I'm saving the check. It's like you're making a double saving on that same policy that you bought. Yeah. This is the whole life insurance. And all of these, they have value because that money that is reinvested brings more dividend. Or if you want, you can lower your premium and pay less. Or if you want, you can take, just take the cash and then you do something with it, but you're still getting the death protection, the death benefit in case you pass. Or, and you're still getting the cash value that which you can take advantage of, okay? I mean, According to the law, if you're 59, if you're less than 59 and a half, that cash value, the money that you take from it, you, you get charged no penalty. And the penalty is based on the government putting that penalty, which is 10%. If you take it before 59 and a half. After 59 and a half, there is no penalty. And you don't even have to to put to pay that money back because this is a loan that you took from your own savings. From your own savings that they're gonna pay you anyway. You know? so, so basically, when you have a life insurance, you have all this guarantee that you can take money out of it. God forbid you have a problem, but you have the death benefit, which is the key. Because death benefit is like I die. 100000 50000 $20,000 is money that is left to my family, the people that I love, okay? So they can continue surviving, living without me being there providing for them every time, you know, every month or every week. And then I'm, at least I know that I can die in peace because they will be taken care of. And this is such a selfless thing but to purchase a life insurance policy because you don't do it for yourself. Because listen, you can get some of the cash value, but when you die, that big check is gonna go to your family, to your children, to, your, to the children yeah. of your children. Yeah. This can ensure for them to go to college. Maybe you didn't get a chance to go to college, but you want your children, children or your children to go to college, but that money, they can take advantage yeah. of it. And the cash value is so important. I tell you, I, last time I told you about that lady that was diagnosed with cancer and she was left with only seven months to die. 
she had a policy for, for half a million dollars, $500,000. $500, she was able to take $100,000 from that policy, use it to take care of herself. And then when she died, the family received $400,000. And that family was her husband and the three children that she had. So people don't realize it. We don't have a timer on us to tell us when we're going to die. I've met people saying that, well, uh, I can save that money, blah, blah, blah. You start saving three months down, somebody call you and say, well, your brother passed in Haiti or your brother passed in um, Kenya. What, are you, what do you think you're going to do? You're just going to sit down and then say, I'm saving that money. You're going to send $500, $500 to your thousand to your family members. Is that saving the same value as when you started? No, it decreased by $1,000. Nope. But that contract that you sign, it's very important. You sign a policy and they are like, there are companies like uh, New York Life Insurance that gives you that temporary coverage. Even when you just sign that policy, even when you didn't any, make any premium payment yet, this company allows you to get a temporary coverage for 90 days. Which means that you didn't even pay one cent. You drop dead the next day. As long as you already signed that policy, you may still get paid. I'm saying, I'm saying you may still get paid because one caveat to that is if you killed yourself, you may not get paid. Right. Because there is a law. And there is a law for that. The law for that is elimination period. It's, a, it's, a, it's called guaranteed. But basically what the law says, when you have a life insurance policy, because so many people were doing this at some point in the country, here in the USA, what they would do, they would purchase a life insurance because life insurance has been around for more than 100 years. JFK had a life insurance policy, in case you didn't know that. Yes, he had. So people were buying a $1 million term life insurance. As soon as they make the first payment, they would get on top of the first tallest building maybe at that time, I don't know if there was like a, <laughs> the Twin Tower, they would jump knowing that the company will pay $1 million to the family members, the people that are left behind. And then came a rule that to just avoid that, there is a two years rule. That two years is um, it's a law that says, if you kill yourself within that period, they're gonna investigate. And then if it was suicide, they're going to return you all the premium that you paid plus a 10% interest. It's still good. They're still going to return all that money that you paid plus some interest. But they're not going to pay you that $1 million. And, But right. it only two years. Okay? After two years, whichever condition you die, accident, you get drawn, you, you, you know, you drop from, the, from, the, from an airplane. I don't know what it is that you want to do then this is not a problem. But, so that's the law. And people need to know that because I don't want anybody to go around there buy life insurance and then something happened and then now they want to blame me. I gave you the information, you know what it is. If you do this like that, you're going to get investigated. I'm not saying that they're not going to pay you. It depends on the findings. If they are able to find that you purposely, you know, pull that gun and then did something to yourself, then your family member will not, get, will not get that big lump sum. They might get some money, but not the whole thing. All right. Thank you, Dr. E. I feel like we've covered a whole lot. Um, at this time, we're going to just ask one question. Did And then, of course, what Dr. E stated is very true. He hasn't put out his information because we want to be able to bring you all into ECI for us to work together. And I, I love the fact that he shared that. You can reach us on WhatsApp at 347-617-6873 or just send a text right now, 347-617-6873 and say, 
I want to be added to your WhatsApp group for ECI. So you'll be able to communicate with all of these beautiful people. The reason why we do that is so that people don't come back tomorrow and say they got misinformation. You know, they feel like they have been misled because everything we do is transparent. And we're really here to try to help our community. But a lot of times our community wants to sabotage us. But Anaya has hands and I'm from Brooklyn and I'm a Zoe. Don't play with me. So 347-617-6873. Hit us up and then we will put you in that group message so you can have access to our beautiful leaders in our community because we want to create this body of leaders in our community to share information. Nobody's trying to hurt anybody. Everybody wants us to win. We want you to win out there. We want to be positive at all costs. So hit us up and Dr. E can share more information. We have much more to do in our community. And I'm glad that Dr. E was able to share all this information. I hope you guys caught that because we're gonna shut down the, the live uh, screen where we've been sharing this information. Instagram has been blowing us up. Send us a message so you can be added. Sampreneur, who actually has been with us since a few months, was the one who let Stephanie know earlier, we're here, this is the link. We found Sampreneur from Instagram. And a few others from Instagram, they have been watching, they have been wanting to be a part, and they have joined us right from Instagram. So if you're watching on Instagram, 347-617-6873, the reason we do this is because we care. With that being said, I just want to ask one question, and then we're going to shut it down, because I said 30 minutes each, but this information is so vital that we've shared tonight that we wanted to make sure that everybody got it. Did you guys see that recently, within the past couple of weeks or so, actually within the week that there was a major bust and there was some criminal, I want to say criminal activity with a particular entity with the Bitcoin slash um, scamming. But okay, I'm going to double check because I, I screenshot everything. I, I put everything, um, but there was a major bust with a scamming. Um, I want to say a scamming community of something that happened. Did you guys see that at all? Where they made $2.15 million. They they told people that it was a Bitcoin situation or what have you. And Squid Games or something, y'all. I'm, I'm, yeah, the Squid Games. Squid Games. Did you guys see that? Because I'm going to pull that up now. But I yes. wanted to hear. It was a cryptocurrency scamming situation vanished with $3.3 million. I wanted to pose that question because here's the thing. And I know some people may feel a kind of way, but I don't give a damn. When we come together, and I'm putting this clearly for those that may be watching, because I know you're watching. Um, when we come together and we communicate about things that we hear, I want you all to be very clear. And you can leave our group. You don't have to stick around. I don't force anybody to do anything. I don't, I don't, this is a zero tolerance zone. I run ECI as if we were in a national entity because I am a national figure. I'm a public figure and I'm glad the people that are on tonight are on. Um, I don't deal with negativity. I don't deal with mess very well because I have been a victim of segregation, of racism, of, of problems systematically in the workforce solution and in the workforce arena. When we come together, it needs to be a very clear and transparent and happy place. When we get information like we did last week, and I'm going to put it out there real quick. Not to bash anybody, but what happened last week is a zero tolerance situation. When my team members come with information that they're hearing, and I know you guys weren't prepared for this, but I got to say it. When my team members come with information, no one has the authority to bash anybody. No one is to display negative energy towards anybody. I thought this was a clear thing, but apparently we have to bring this back um, because we all gather information in separate worlds. We're all in ECI in separate worlds. So when we come together, it's literally to uphold a positive arena of information for the general public that may be watching and that may be getting inspired because people do get inspired every single day. I get the calls, I get the messages, then I screen people and then I put them in the ECI group. I don't allow everybody to join us. I can't. There are people that watch me that know my every move because I'm a national figure. I have a lot of associations. I'm with politicians all day. I'm with public figures all day. Hell, I'm with Dr. 
Dr. Oz and freaking Dr. Umar Johnson. You can't even, you can't even put them in the same category, right? Larry, you can't put Dr. Oz or Dr. Umar Johnson in the same category. So I say that to say, when we gather information, we want to share, we want to create a space to welcome people. So this space was built to learn, to grow, to accept, to accelerate, to, to advocate for one another. Um, I, nobody has the authority to shut anybody down, to, to tell people that they can't be a part of the economic crisis initiative because number one, Anaya was a victim, of not only racism, but of where people have tried to kill me and I had nowhere to go. And if you don't know the backstory, I'll share it next week. But I don't often share my story because it's an emotional toll on my body. And when I hear people trying to negate whom can talk and whom can be allowed in my space that I've created for my people, zero tolerance zone. With that being said, last week we had a situation and I'm addressing it publicly, which I typically don't. I don't do very kindly when people try to bash others or try to be negative to my team. I work very hard to build people's relationship with myself as I try to garner a space for us to feel safe and to feel appreciated. Last week we had a situation, if you are not aware, that's fine, but this situation is going to be addressed because it cannot happen again. When my team members come in with something positive that they wanna share, we accept, we love, we honor, and we listen because that's what EC mm -hmm. is about. When I go on national stages, I'll be damned if the person that's hosting the event tries to tell me I ain't shit because I will tell you, I gotta go. I don't care how much I'm getting paid. I don't care what the platform is. You will not disrespect me and I will not allow for any disrespect on this platform. With that being said, right after a situation occurred last week, a scamming situation came out, Squid Games. Cryptocurrency scammers vanished with 3.3 million. It hit the waves, it was on CBS News, it was on Threat Pros, it was on all sorts of CNN, you name it. Because what people fail to realize is whether or not we, as the general public, who are trying to make it to the next level, we are, are not the scammers, we are not the people with the, the negative you know, idealizations of, of how money to be made. There are people that are targeting us every day. Therefore, we have to be open to learning and growing together. So that's why I wanted to share that. So as we move forward, I accept everybody in every walk of life and every scenario. So I just wanted to ask you guys, if you've heard about this squid game, cryptocurrency nightmare where these people made off with 3.3 million. And here's the thing, before I shut my big mouth, in every walk of life and everywhere you go, there are gonna be scammers, guys. None of us are exempt. For example, like what Dr. Exima was talking about, if he wasn't a reputable, legitimate organization, he could tell us this and he could sell us a fake policy tomorrow and walk off with our money, but he's not gonna do that. Everybody we, we meet in life, we're taking a chance in meeting. We cannot be negative in the space that we're in. As soon as last week occurred, I turned my phone on the next day or two days later, and here it was. These people ran off with 3.3 million. They're creating a space for people to join them in this cryptocurrency Crazy. world, and they're scamming. Can we stop them? Hell to the now. It's our judgment that's going to allow for us to follow their thread, follow their trend, follow their, their, their pace or what have you, or we can communicate with ECI, go around the knowledge and work together like a happy family because that's what the space was created for. I can't go to Stephanie and be like, Stephanie, I need you to sign up for what I got going on today because you are gonna make a million dollars tomorrow. I'm not doing that. I don't care what my product is. I'm not doing that to Larry. I'm not doing that to Linda. I'm not doing that to the iPad that's on here. That I don't even know who the iPad is. I'm not doing that to people on Instagram because I cannot guarantee you success. Therefore, I can't take offense when somebody says, 
Anaya, at this time, I refuse to join the bandwagon. I'll look into it. I'll think about it. But I ain't guaranteeing you nothing because I won't try to force a soul to join anything that I'm a part of because I, I want to touch on that. Um, I want to touch on that because I didn't. I actually just read it a while ago with respects to um, that cryptocurrency. The I don't know what it was like. Literally, that just looks like a whole mess right there. But I could see where it could be so easy for somebody to get um, misconstrued with the information that goes on with cryptocurrency. Yes, but I say to I say this to say this, and I say this as for all of us. We need to have some educational background before we do anything. If you want to become a doctor, okay, you cannot go into the eighth floor of a building and say, hey, I'm here to do surgery on somebody. Correct. No, you got to go through and you have to learn education wise how to become a doctor. I get it that there's so many ways in which there's, there's ways to make money out here like crazy. I get it. I get it. But trying to cheat the system will get you in the problem that a lot of these people put themselves in. There is one place right now for cryptocurrency. Well, there's a few of them, but there's a major website that if you are going to actually be going in and purchasing cryptocurrency, and I want all of you guys to take note of this, is there's a website called CoinMarketCap. You know what? Okay, it's called coinmarketcap.com. Coinmarketcap.com. Coin yeah, coinmarketcap.com. And CoinMarketCap is a is one of the only companies right now. It's actually governed by, uh, it's publicly traded right now. It's a publicly traded company. And it allows you to see in real time what's going on with the, cur the cryptocurrencies that are being created. Now, this one that I just read about, it was nowhere on CoinMarketCap. So somebody in their right minds obviously knows the background of how to manipulate coin market cap and knows that 75 maybe 85 percent of people will not go check coin market cap mm. and they had the opportunity to say hey hey just like we advertise on facebook on just like we advertise about social media uh, uh, fashion over whatever they had the opportunity to think logically as a smart person i know i can get me be 65 percent of people to believe in this shit coin okay and if the 65 percent of people that actually got indulged in that crap had taken the time to just educate themselves we can avoid those problems and here i am the voice of those people to say that it happened but we got to be able to throw it to the side and really say to ourselves we're going to learn just like i said to you a doctor can go upstairs to the eighth floor he can't be he can go to the upstairs and say, oh, I want to do surgery. A doc, somebody can walk in and say, you know what, on the fifth floor and say, hey, I'm here to perform a surgery. And everybody that doesn't want to wait can go to that person on the fifth floor. It's up to you what Absolutely. you want to do. But if you want to go get botched or if you want to go up there, you got to make sure that you're going in there to learn. And the skill doesn't change because it's called in the financial markets, just like the insurance world. It doesn't change with what the doctor just said a while ago. It doesn't change the fact that you have to understand, even in the insurance world, the steps on in order for you to get insured. You cannot just bypass it and be like, oh, I just want to get insured just for the sake of insurance. I don't care what's going on. Just put me under any policy. No, somebody needs and to know are you a this smoker. Message. Somebody needs to know if you're a drinker. Somebody needs to know all of that information educated wise so that they can make an educated decision. If you go in there fast paced and expect to get fast money, you're going to get what's what that, what I just read about a while. Amen, ago. sister. And, I, and I, it's so And I approve this message. And he approved it's heartbreaking. this message. Yes. Yeah, we it's, do this in politics, like after somebody says something like uh, after advertising, we say, yes. and I approve this <laughs> message. So just for you to know that I'm standing right behind your sister. And I tell you, I'm going to add one thing. Uh, Coinbase also is a good platform to buy cryptos and Coinbase is being traded also officially Absolutely. on the stock market. So, so far, CoinMarket it Cap is on the and stock Coinbase, market. yeah, CoinMarketCap and Coinbase I know a lot of people out there are doing Robin Hood. They are doing Gemini. Yeah. Be careful because um, Gemini may become... Uh, Robin Hood actually is being traded too. And the stock is Hood, H-O-O-D. So you can buy it on the stock market, yeah. which means that mm -hmm. this 
companies when, when they are uh, being traded so that people understand is that if they are if they are officially being traded on the stock market is that they are being vetted vetted by the sec yes and that's another thing. Okay. What, what about E Trade? What about E Trade? E Trade. Oh, E Trade. Yeah. E Trade. Yes. Oh, okay. Trade is there. But, yeah. but we're talking about crypto mostly. Yeah. Like crypto is the new thing. A lot of people yeah. are jumping boat, but uh, yes. there is a. But. I think because you they want to know exactly hands on approach, and yes. I think that's the difference with the crypto world. Because at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Like, and that's why ETI started, just to let you guys know. And this is right. why I'm glad we're talking about this. And we're all on one accord. Right. ECI and started the key to that, the key to that, and uh, Steph pointed it out. That's why I said I approved her message. Yeah. Her message, because it's education. This is exactly the whole purpose of what we're doing here. We give you the information. We don't tell you go what into Coinbase. Do? We tell you Coinbase could be a good one. But now you go, you sit down, and now uh, um, it's so easy to do it. Anybody is Googling. People Everybody know Google. Google. My in nephew. French, for my French speakers, yeah. Google. 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 Look, Dr. E, my nephew in South Florida who just turned seven this past month, October. Are we still in October? No, we're in November. Mm -hmm. On October 12th, I'll call him. He's like, Tati. Are you still having problems with your new iPhone? You know I'm an expert. When he was six years old from South Florida, he could tell me what to do oh, on the iPhone 12 from South Florida because he's an expert and I'm dumb as hell and I had an Android until 2021. But I share that to say too, like Dr. E and Stephanie and we're all saying, one of the things that we have to understand is the way that things are going now, everybody wants a hands-on approach. Nobody is going to, and that's how ECI started. When I started ECI, as you guys know, and it's going to grow from here, it's going to be exponential because there's something coming that people don't know about. I'm working on behind the scenes. Things are going to get really amazing very soon. It's amazing now, but it's going to be more amazing um, within a couple of weeks. So one of the things I want people to understand is when I kept going to the white man, I had all of my money in my stocks and things of that nature, and I could not understand the trading and what he was investing in, and he would not answer any of my questions. I became frustrated because I'm like, I don't understand this, but I have money going into this platform that he generates money for, or he just doesn't generate money for because I'm not a wealthy multimillionaire person. I'm just trying to have a savings so that when I die, I can actually die in peace. Or even before I die, shit, if I want to go and withdraw a couple of million or a couple of thousands, I can do so. And the white man would not educate me. And this is my damn money. So economic crisis initiative started because I didn't understand a thing. Why do you think he would? What is it? No, I said, why do you think he wouldn't? Because, because he once he teaches me to you, and then I would exactly. not pay once him. Once he teaches you, you don't need to pay him anymore. You sit but here's back the and thing. do it yourself. But here's the thing. I don't have the time to do it myself. So he caused me to withdraw everything because of his selfish intentions. See, in life, you cannot think that somebody is going to out outsmart you or take away your livelihood because... A, others have done it. B, you think that you're all, the almighty, all-knowing. Or C, you feel as though if you teach something to somebody today, they're going to try to, you know, take all the profit. Let me tell you guys something. I would have stayed with the white man had he done his part and educated me so I can know yeah. how to move forward. I am not like that because why would I spend, do you know how time consuming it is to learn this? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to learn the stock market, I don't do good with numbers. I know how to buy stuff. I know how to save a little something. But all this other stuff in between, and I doesn't do that. So this is what I want people to know. And I'm glad we talked about this, Stephanie, and everybody watching. Never misconstrue somebody's intentions. Don't think you could bamboozle somebody because you're going to lose out on everything. Friendship for over six years. A client for over six years, a, a partner who would bring others to you and pay others to join your platform. What people didn't know is I paid for other people to start signing up with this man because I wanted our Black people to have something. 
And recently I saw the benefits of my fruit. But you know what? People cannot assume in this life. You can't assume that once I learn this, I'm going to take off and be gone. Why would I do that? But people assume oh. this because they're privileged. You know, privileged people all over, all over, all around us. And they keep screwing themselves. The thing is, people got to learn how That part. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to be speaking to a few important, very important things. Now, okay, perfect. you know, in and ECI, in quick, ECI, we're shutting down at 830 Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Comment. Two minutes. Perfect. All right. You know, ACI. One of the goal is to educate people. So earlier I said education. Yeah. Education on what? There are things that you need to know. Yes. There are things that you need to know by. There are things that you need to know within the market itself. When you're investing, there is something called pump and dump. Ah, this is basically one of the things that can happen. You need to be very careful. That's when you have people in crypto that we call well. They can buy a lot of stock for $2.1 million, $5 million. And then when it starts increasing, they sell everything and they pull their money out. And then you, if you didn't know anything, you just like... Mm. You know. <laughs> That's one thing you need to know about this thing. So now, and that's ninety-seven percent of the world right now. Ninety-seven percent of the world is doing that. Yeah, right now. So right now, now, educate. When Even we say education, point. yeah, educate on what? Okay, one of the things you need to get education on is proof it's of concept. The FOMO. So now, yeah. FOMO. Okay. Sorry, FOMO. Somebody... FOMO. There, there is a whole language going around uh, crypto. FOMO is when people uh, have fear of missing out, and those ah, people. Missing out? That's why they lost a lot of money with the Squid Game scam because they had fear, yes. they, they were FOMO. They had fear of missing out. So when they hear about the hype, we, sp we spoke about hype earlier, the, yep. Larry. So they go with the hype and then they buy a lot of it. <laughs> but it's a S quen. I don't want to say bad word because I don't want I, I don't want Anaya to go after me, but it's a shirt quen. No, say they it. Are shirt quen out there. there are things that people are trading on, but that has no real value. Okay. Um, in the, back home in Creole, we call them Mary Long. It's like bad mangoes. <laughs> so basically, so <laughs> they exist. <laughs> so funny. I'm making a joke, but what I want people to be aware of is that you will find it anywhere. Even in mangoes, within mangoes, you can buy good mangoes, juicy ones, very sweet. Mm. But we can have bad mangoes too. Bad mangoes in Creole, oh, they one. call they they call them. Uh, um, I Mango. already forgot the word. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically it exists. So for you to know, before you purchase a coin, you need to find out if the coin has a proof of concept. This is in business. Yes. Any business presentation, anything that you have, you're selling for it to have value, it needs to have a proof of concept. And especially in crypto, this is even more important. When crypto started, I've, I've been in it since 2020, uh, I think 2013, 2015, mm. okay? It's a long time. It's almost like nine good years. So now what I figured, I've seen a coin that's called Putin coin from, from Russia. I was gonna say, that sounds like that crazy. So I saw, yeah, Putin coin from Vladimir Putin from Russia. I looked into it and I said, okay, what's the proof of concept? Shit. I don't see anything. I never purchased anything from it. There are many other coins that are out there. They are flying out there. They could be listed. Be very careful, very vigilant. Mm. They could have no worth, no value, no real value. That's one thing. So learn about proof of concept before you buy a coin or a token. You need to find out if uh, the proof of concept could be, for example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is there to improve um, communication system between transactions. So people with Bitcoin, people can send money faster around the world. Things mm -hmm. that could have taken you days or months, now it's taking you a couple of hours, uh, actually a couple of minutes or seconds. Minutes. Okay, that's the, that's what, that's the proof of concept Ethereum, of Bitcoin. Ethereum. Bitcoin. Ethereum does that also. There are platforms the that are created. Ethereum is... mm -hmm. No, sorry, keep going. I was gonna say, and the proof of Ethereum is pretty much every single coin that is ever created in order for it to be created it has to go on to a platform in order for it yeah. to actually get somewhere it has to get on a platform that platform
platform is proof of coin with ethereum ethereum okay. is that platform it's um, ethereum right. you can consider is almost like your microsoft in yeah. our Correct. world everybody That's a good before example. they have to start they yes. have to basically That's your jump on ethereum so yeah. right as he said bitcoin is one that you definitely should be playing with ethereum is one that you want to be playing with if you want to avoid all shit coins be, by all means but you can do your research and and and, and buy but these two have these and, and also cordano cordano has its way of coming through as well right now xrp has another proof of um proof of coin so these are coins that you basically should be looking at um what i always tell people is if you don't know about a coin come into an ec channel like yes. this and learn about yes. something else if you don't do know anything Find somebody else that knows about it and yeah. talk about it. And the second I'm thing fine. you look at, I'm the second thing you look at. I'm glad y'all said something about that because Anaya, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, months, yeah. I'm talking about months ago, was I not the first person to say somebody Ethereum and everybody looked at me like I was crazy? You're right. I said, I said Ethereum is the only other one that I would validate outside of Bitcoin. That's the only other one. Absolutely. It's just like you got this new one, this Shiba, Shibu, Shih Tzu, whatever it is. I ain't validating that. You know, yeah, you can probably go get a hundred thousand of them because it's less than a penny, but it's too many. You know, like like Doctor Exma said, the pump, the the pump and dump. See, the pump and dump formula worked for me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share this quick story with everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what, so, Larry? The pump and dump will work now that me and you are friends. We're, we'll figure it out together. No, 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 no. Hold on, Steph. I'm gonna tell you the story because I showed Anaya this my screenshots. I showed her mine. So, okay. like I said, I have this theory when it comes to situations like the pandemic. I always tell people you can find opportunities in the midst of tragedies. So, do you remember when the pandemic first jumped off? Mm -hmm. Were you actually monitoring the market? Do you, were you were you you were monitoring the market? Yeah, I was. She okay. Was, I wasn't. Oh, I I was I was I was acting like it was a seventy five percent off sale in the stock market. I was okay, acting so like I was this. going in a grocery store. So check this out. Everything was seventy five percent. Pandemic. Off. I'm gonna tell you. I'm not really big into the investing, the crypto, the AI, none of that. But when situations like this happen, even like the recession, I jumped in, but I jumped out at the right time. So. I had told all my friends, I said, look, throw your money into Sprint because Sprint is about to have this big merger with T-Mobile, right? So Sprint Sprint was only trading, uh, I think it was $7 a share. So I bought like $100 worth of Sprint. Two weeks later, I kid you not, two 21. weeks later, two weeks later, T-Mobile bought out Sprint. Hmm. My shares went from $7 a share to $82 yes, a share. Uh, yes. I, I... So then the pandemic started thickening up a little bit. Travel started to decline. Carnival Cruise Line was trading at $8 a share. Royal Caribbean was trading at like $13 a share. Mm -hmm. I put money in Hearst rental car, whatever. So all in all together, when I was Put my I spread my money around. I spread it around. I might have put fifteen hundred total into the market. I walked away with seventeen thousand mm. because I dumped it at the right time. Let's go. I dumped it at the right time. Now I did hold on to it for a little bit, but I dumped it at when the pandemic first jumped off. It was February, so I started throwing money in, in the market in March when everybody was. You know, panicking for the toilet paper, panicking yeah. for the hand sanitizer, panicking for the ECI sanitizer. is important. So what I did oh. was I said, you know what? I'm going to, and I had a time frame in my head. This was just my own personal time frame. I dumped everything October last year. The, re the reason why I did that is because in my mind, everything had already capped out because here's the thing stuff is going to start opening back up and getting and getting hot no if you remember about august september october around that time frame 
is when things started to kind of open back up. I forgot when they did that two or three step phase to open the phases to open the, the world back up. You it was in, about October ish. It was about October ish. Because remember, people were starting to plan on traveling because people wanted to go see their families they hadn't seen all year for Thanksgiving. Right. People wanted to start going somewhere in December. So I strategically did it that way. Well, okay. I'm happy that you mentioned that because pump and dump is not such a bad, really bad thing. But basically, basically, you need to know how to do it. That's why I said it. It's a bad technique because in, in regular stock market, you can mm -hmm. be penalized for that. You know that, right? In right, cryptos, right. you're not going to be penalized. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in regular stock market, when you do that and you take the benefit before one year, there is this rule where you can, depending on how much money you did, then you, you did make, then you could be penalized for that. Uh, they can, they a, might yeah, charge you higher deal. tax and all that. Okay, yeah, that's a big I, deal. I pump, but I pump and dump Dogecoin though. So look, right. when, when no one was even talking about Dogecoin, right? Mm -hmm. I bought Dogecoin when it was three cents a share. I think I yeah, put so like $300 into it at right. three cents a share. Right. I dumped it when it went up to 69 cents. Right. Because right. in my head, it won't go no higher. Now it actually mm -hmm. raised to 72 and then it slammed back down. So at the 69, I was still safe. Mm -hmm. I was still so, safe. Well, of course, yes. So it's a good technique, but it's a uh, regular stock market, you can be penalized. Mm -hmm. And crypto, you're not going to be penalized, but you need to know when and how. And this, it takes a lot to be able to do that because they are like markers. When you look at the trend, you need mm. to know how to study the trend so you know when to pump, when to dump. Okay, that's one thing. Now, uh, the second thing that you need to know about is called proof of worth. Mm. So if you, look at, if you look at a coin and then you see that, well, there is no market. It's maybe a couple of thousand coins and you see the worth is very low and you don't know who's backing it up, don't buy it. Basically, because there is no worth. So you need to look at uh, um, um, token or coins that are worth in the billion. And then you know that you look at who's backing it up. For example, Dogecoin, we know that Elon Musk and uh, Mark Cuban are behind it, the Dallas yeah. Maverick owner. You know, so this is a coin you can you can, you can think you can about buying it. because you can play around with it because at least you know that yeah. some very important people are backing it up with their cash because these millionaires, they don't put cash wherever they are not sure. They, they have people that make the study, that can study the market, whom they pay. And then when they make a purchase, you can tell that it's a good and secure purchase because they are not buying into shit points. All right? right. So proof of work, worth, and then who try to know who's ba who's backing it, okay, or who's buying it, and there are these but it, things. But it's kind of it's kind of hard to learn now who's backing what because if you saw what happened a couple weeks ago, everyone thought Elon Musk was backing that Shibu or Shiba, and then he came out and was like, "I ain't got no money in Shiba." That's important. You see, a lot of people he plummeted. Yeah, he it did. plummeted because yeah. people thought because. He people thought, but he never money. said that. So I think maybe because he sees that a lot of people are thinking that he has it and he's backing it up. So mm -hmm. just to be safe, to be on the safe side, he said he said exactly plainly, I don't have any Shiba in me. And then he plummeted. It so plummeted. basically, but, but if yeah. you do if you do searches, you can directly see that he doesn't have he doesn't have no access to Shiba. Shiba's coming from a, a, a Chinese, it's it's backed by a Chinese, like it's a whole, a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. And thing is i don't know anything about shiba but i know that elon musk has nothing to do with it however if he elon musk is sitting at home just like we're sitting right now and keeps on hearing oh elon musk is part of it he's looking at the tv saying oh you guys think i'm part of it eh you know what let me go advertise and act like and, and, and gain some money first and then tell them i'm not he's not going to tell you that he's not going to play that game either Right. So you have to just be educated on knowing hey is he going to play a game or is he just going to you know what i mean Mm -hmm. this is what elon musk gets paid to do he's not a very nice person so when he's ready he's a very nice person when he comes to money but he'll throw the world off what do you think just so him? that he can win and this one percent that's with him could win too right so mm -hmm. i think with respects to shiba people just needed to do their 
education on Shiba. I knew it was coming for a long time. As much as you want to call it a pump and a dump, it is because again, it's coming, but it has very good potential right now. It really does. If you stay and you watch it a little bit more, it really has potential. I, then that's the thing. I'm just going to utilize that. Now I'll tell you, I like the pump and dump because what I call the pump and dump is they're playing the 1% game. The 1% likes to play. They like to, everybody put and all that no you lose hmm. who's gonna like that game but if every game some of us are not so, so that's why some of us are becoming multi-millionaires well some of us literally like you know what i mean we're not we're not really making it anywhere hmm. oh my god i love the pump and dump game yeah like I some of us are making mad ass money from it there's people that are really not Perfect money, but it all perfect, did, perfect segue. It, Stephanie, you're actually breaking. It all comes up. down to how educated, educated, and willing to stay focused and stay positive. With that being said, perfect segue to shutting us down. We're supposed to end at eight thirty, but I let us go a little longer. I've been up since four o'clock in the morning, um, and I have to follow up with my sister Stephanie, Larry, um, Doctor E. You guys have been amazing. The energy is up tonight. Definitely a different contrast. I'm so excited that we're ending on a great note. Everybody's excited, pumped and dumped, or whatever the hell you're gonna call it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you, Anaya, you gotta treat. See, I treat the stock market and everything like the streets. You know what I'm saying? I'm Larry, positive. Larry, I'm don't you start low, tonight. Larry, don't start. We're gonna talk about this offline, Larry. Larry, <laughs> behave yourself. Listen. <laughs> It has been a great session and a great segment of ECI. We are Thank building- Thank you, Steph. Yes, we are building, Stephanie. I'm so glad she's back on track with us. Thank you, Steph. Yep. Thank you, Stephanie, guys. We all of you guys. Thank you, guys. We coming to Canada. We can, we're coming to Canada. Look, cool. I say Canada, I say Canada, whatever. Yeah. Listen, y'all already we know. We coming, Canada, though, bro. My favorite How can I contact Stephanie privately? Um, we're going to do what you call the WhatsApp group, which is 347-617-6873. Please send us a message so you could be added to the WhatsApp. Everybody, I would like you to take 30 seconds to just close out. Say something. Look, tonight we're going to say something yeah. positive and exciting to close us out to leave everybody on a great note. Go ahead. Starting with you, Dr. E, because I feel like Dr. E is on three different calls right now. Dr. E, just say something. Yes, I am. <laughs> ECI is the thing. So there is a good place. It's a good forum. And I hope more people will join in because there is a lot that we have to learn. And because I still believe that a new Black Wall Street is still be possible. Woo! Thank you. And people are watching on Instagram. Thank you, Dr. E. We'll follow up later on for sure. Stephanie, go ahead. You're the next in line. Say something positive, amazing. Let's leave on a great note. I don't know if I can beat what he just said a while ago. We do, we need a new Black Wall Street. I believe that we should all be killing this Wall Street. There's no reason why it's not supposed to be called Black Wall Street because once we get our minds together, there's nothing that's, we're unstoppable and we've been unstoppable. Um, whatever we've learned in the past, we're just going to add value to it and just get out there to the world. We're going to be on top regardless how they feel. That's it, girl. That's it, sister. I love it. She did it. Go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. You already know I got to end ECI how I always end ECI. Here we go. My slogan in life, it's been my slogan since I was seven years old. Seven, my, and he's 67 now, 60 man, old years. Playing. My favorite uncle used to always tell me this when he was living. Slow progress is better than Amen. no progress. Amen. I don't care if it takes me a year. I don't Amen. care if it takes me 10 years. I don't care if it takes me two days. You got to work hard. You got to research. You got to study. You got to study and show yourself approved. I don't care what market you're in. You could be in the real estate with me. You could be in the banking with me. You could be in the life insurance with Dr. Eczema. You can be in the AI world with the great Stephanie. Yeah. But, and I next time, let me announce quickly the next topic. Next time, I will teach people how to retire having a paycheck for life. Okay. That's what's coming next. What's coming next with that? Let you, you, finish his. Listen, so I'm going to show you how to still get a paycheck after you turn 65 and you go sit down because guess what? Social security is getting away. It's ending. 
We, it's ending soon. Dr. E, so now we people know, need to learn how to so retire excited, with Lord. some money. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. E. Listen, we that's the energy. Time. Look, look, Larry, like, yo, Dr. E don't mess up my whole closing. But you know he's excited when he hears from you. When these two get together, it's this energy. They, they <laughs> energy. feed off each other. That energy. This is the reason I'm coming down to Virginia to just to meet him. Meet the guy <laughs> and talk about business. We'll do that. Let's do it. Hi, everybody. Go ahead, Larry. Finish what you were saying because we're about to shut it down for tonight. You Go know ahead. what I'm saying? Like I said, slow progress is better. I don't care what you study. If you if you have an interest in something, if you want to be proficient at it, even me, I'm back in school. I'm studying the what well, my degree is gonna be in digital forensics. If y'all don't know, it's digital forensics. Pretty much it's a criminal justice degree that focuses in IT. So, so basically you're gonna be catching you're gonna be catching scammers, right? Pretty much. Like the ones that just scammed three point three million dollars. I'm down with that digitally. 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 Don't I'm forget the kids Digitally. But, digitally. But, but if you want to be proficient in something, I don't care what it is. You got to take time to study to learn it. Because if you're going to teach others, you have to be well versed in it yourself. You, you can't be teaching nobody, no, excuse my language, no half ass information. Right. That part. So if you want to, if you want to be proficient in something, study it. And it don't matter how long it takes. If you, if you 35, 45, 55, age don't mean nothing. 40 is the new 30. So, you know, you know, we coming in hard. Hard. So it's good. It's, we good. We you good know, in the hood. 21. He gonna okay, I'm happy up. that you said age don't mean nothing. Let me crack this one with you real quick, Larry. I love this. Do guy. you know that Toussaint Louverture, he taught himself how to read at 40? Huh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do y'all know that your president just became president at 80 something? He's 95. That <laughs> Negro is about to, listen, don't get me started. There, there you go. Listen, it don't matter because we it about doesn't to matter. He, he is going at sleepy he Joe. His highest paycheck, all the work that he's put in paid him right now. It doesn't matter his age. Listen, Dude, and a black to, man, a black man to helped him get there. in. Don't forget, if it wasn't for Barack, he wouldn't be there now. He's 90. Amen. 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 It don't matter. We're about to put Wyclef in there. Amen. So yes, Jesus! Wyclef, Toussaint Louverture, Jean. I love it. Yeah, and Kodak Black. It's okay. Oh, no, it's okay. It, Kodak, let's if go. Watching, let's if, go. If Kodak is watching no offense, but I don't want you nowhere near these people. Listen, look, Miami boy. <laughs> calm down, Larry. Listen, iPad. Who is iPad? Just to say something positive, and oh, then we're going to have Linda say oh, something. Put my favorite Haitian rapper in there. Who? Rick Ross. You know what? He ain't even real. You know what? His mama, his, mama, his mama's from Haiti. Oh my God. Here we go, Jesus. We ain't gonna, mm -hmm. gonna leave it now. I'm so tired. iPad or Linda, somebody help me with Larry Robinson, aka I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Rick, Ross, Rick Ross is Haitian, just like Biggie was Jamaican. Biggie was on road raised in Jamaica. He was raised uh, right there in Brooklyn. Jamaica Ave. And Queens. In no, his Queens. mother was Jamaican. I'm done. Just like Rick Ross' mom was Asian. Lord have mercy on Zaya. Linda, can you share <laughs> two closing positive words? Because these island, thick island people, I love them. Go ahead, Linda, just something positive so we can shut down with Larry because he's from the Miami Zoo area and he representing all the flags. Go ahead, Man, Linda. Everything. What, what other other activities can they um bring to Haiti so those people can leave that dirty marché? You know what the place, the marketplace? I know. So that's another topic for another day, sister. Don't worry. We'll add you um, and you'll stay informed with us. Just you know, get up and leave. Sorry. No they problem. Get up and leave that dirty place. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. We said something positive, Linda. You that's positive. They okay. get up and leave okay. and go do swimming. Go okay. do Thank sailing. you, Linda. Thank you, both. <laughs> God bless you. I think awesome. I got the tune. Get up and leave now. Mm -mm. Get up and oh leave. My God. Dr. E, iPad, last word, and then we're out of here, guys. I appreciate all you. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, and I, it's Sam Punor. Oh, Sam Punor, the whole time. We didn't know us too. I've been listening in the background. So, uh, hey, guys, I want to say I second almost everything you guys said tonight. <laughs> it's like, some gold nuggets. Uh, thank you so much for all the information. Um, you know, I just want to add, you can't learn or invest with your fist closed, with a 
close fist, right? Okay. With that being said, if you trying to make money in the market or whatever it is, you have to first invest invest in yourself, get that information, get that knowledge, so you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Also, do not invest any money that you're not willing to lose mm-hmm. because there's no perfect guarantee in that market. Just like you guys were talking about pop and dump. It is a good tactic. You just have to get in at the right time. So that's all I wanted to say. Just, you know, learn, do your research. Don't follow the, the hype. Like Larry said, because a lot of time, by the time we hear about it, the 1% already made millions, billions on it. So we like, they, they dump in it at that time. So we're already t- almost too late. Yeah. So don't just jump in it and get crazy. So do your research, know where you're putting your money. Also pick a side, are you trading or are you investing for the long term? Mm. So you have to make sure you, you, you know where you stand. So these, that's what I wanted to add in. So it was a great show tonight. Stampreneur, yeah. it was a great segment, and you have to come on and be a presenter. I'm tired of you staying in the background. <laughs> I've been so busy. Last last month, everybody in my house had COVID, like all seven of us. So I was, yeah, so. Sorry. Sorry. Thank God we all recovered, and we all good. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. Well, when you're ready, sir, because you have a lot of great information. And thank resources. you. Thank you. Let's yeah. make it happen. And I love yeah. your energy. Even when you're in the background, you're yes. so positive. And I really Yes, ma'am. Thank you so you. much. And I, it's it's a great family to be here. It's Thank a you. great Thank you, family. I'm telling you. So ECI, we have a lot more to come. <laughs> Just last thought. And I wanted to share this. Everything is positive with us. Everything is family oriented first. It literally was something that was developed out of a thought of trying to make sure we increase wealth, decrease debt. Here's the thing, I have a great opportunity. I have a few great opportunities. I wanna share these last commentaries and we're done. We're way over time because your girl got bags under her eyes look right there. But we family, so y'all can see the bags right there. Okay, look. Listen, leave me alone, sir. So real quick, one thing I want you guys to know, look, somebody saying I'm down with the real Rick Ross. Lord have mercy, they listen to everything we saying on Instagram. Um, Dr. Oz is a humanitarian. I took the chance to ask Dr. Oz, and I think Dr. Ekema will be very happy about this. I took the, um, the, the opportunity to ask the producers, my favorite producers on, on Dr. Oz. Is Dr. Oz a humanitarian? Because I know he does a whole lot, but is he doing anything for the young people that want to become medical doctors? And he is. I got some information. Anybody interested or anybody have any students or children, especially in our Black and Brown communities, that want to become doctors. We do not have all of the fundings a lot of times to send our students, our children. It's very costly to send our young people. This is a personal mission that I'm going to be joining forces with Dr. Oz on. Even when he's not fully present, I have the information now so I can lead the way. Um, like I said earlier, Dr. Oz asked me a lot of questions today personally, and I'm so glad we have the opportunity to talk one-on-one because there was no audience. So we really have that moment. He wasn't being pulled every which way. I got to hold this jacket, okay, hello somebody. But either way, the main point is I wanted to share this at the closing that we have an opportunity as a black community to join forces with somebody like Dr. Oz and try to get our young people scholarships and funding so that they can go to medical school. We need more black doctors, we need more black engineers, black everything, that's the bottom line. Secondly, keep joining us on ECI to find out updates. I just uh, reconnected with a very powerful person in the media industry, but also in the PR world. I'm working on something now. I'm not going to disclose, but if anybody's interested in more media publications, getting your message out there, working with your Glenaya A to expand your brand, I think now's the time to jump on board with me. I'm very busy, but every time I open my mouth, God sends me somebody to help my mission and to help all of you. I don't do this for a monetary gain. I do this because I care. But now that we have these other opportunities, there will be room for investors and there will be room for monetary gains because we have to pay out to get what we need. I believe it was Dr. E or somebody that stated something earlier, like money attracts money. And I want you guys to remember that. There is no nominal fee for ECI when you gain this information, but very soon for us to be in a very bigger, bigger screen, a bigger place, there will be a nominal fee. 
and we need investors on board because if we want to outsource as well as continue to build bigger and better, we need to spend a little something together as a team. So we could do it as a team, we could do it as individuals. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be able to tell you a lot more tomorrow, after tomorrow, I'll say it like this, because God has redeveloped this relationship that was lost for over two years. I've been trying to track this person now. They didn't even know we were, I was blocked on social media, on Facebook from reaching out. They said, Anaya, why would I block you? I was reaching out to you. See how the devil moves? You see how the devil work? Hey, Dre, you see how the devil move? This whole time I thought this person was blocking me. When we finally got back in contact, they're like, why would I do that? So I don't know how that happened, but over two years ago, we started something and now it's coming full circle. So this is totally different from Dr. Oz, but I want you guys to keep that in mind that Dr. Oz is a humanitarian. There's available scholarships out there for our young children who do not have all the funding to go to medical school. That's one. And as we build that platform, there'll be a lot more platforms for us to work on. And the second one is expanding that brand. If you desire, because all of us are separate entities. Everybody that's watching here, either you're on social media, on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you'll watch this later, you are your own entity. You have your own businesses. The best way to expand and to grow and to get that profit and return is to be involved in certain arenas that can give you more exposure. And so when myself and this group of people reconnected, just know that this is one of the biggest blessings ever. And I'll be sure to follow up with all of you. At this time, I want to say thank you, God, for all of you. Tonight has been just so amazing. It's been almost six months of chaos that I could not be here with all of you. I get emotional, but I want you to know we're not going to drop the ball again. If you see Anaya disappears because there's madness in the world, please call me, reach out to me. Tell me, Anaya, please don't give up on ECI. Don't give up on your personal goals. Don't give up on your businesses. I own a couple of businesses, but when crisis happens to this country, you see this country right here? I'm like, I don't understand. Like, it's such an emotional. Anyway. If you see that ECI is not blooming, take the leadership from me, please. Tell me, Anaya, I want to step in. How can we help you? Because when it comes to my, my family and when it comes to Haiti, sometimes my focus gets shifted and I can't focus. But this is what it's been about. And tonight's conversation was such amazing, amazing moments that I'll never forget. From the laughter to the information to the resources, we're back on track. At this time, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. For all those that's been watching on Instagram and Facebook, 347-617-6873. We're putting leaders in position. Everybody that you've seen here has a specialty. And we're going to make sure that we expand our horizons so we all could be accessible to all of you as we build and as we grow. Thank you for your energy. And I just want to say thank God for giving us another day on this earth because it's all about our futures. It's all about each other. And it's all about the growth of a beautiful community because we know we can be the best that God has created us to be. Thank you guys so much. And we'll be back next week. Dr. E, Steph, Linda, Sampreneur, Larry Robinson. Lord have mercy on Zion. Let's get back on track. Reach out guys and let's be beautiful. We'll be back next week, 6.30 PM Eastern Standard Time. In the interim, if you want to be a part of the ECI, 347-617-6873, drop me a message now and say, Anaya, put me down with the ECI so we can work together. Thank you, guys. God bless. Dr. E, we'll talk you. tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Hello, guys. All right, good night, guys. Have a great night. Blessings. Take care. Good night. Take care. Good night.